Welcome back, mechanics students. We are here to solve another example using Moore's circle. In this example, uh, we'll be able to take a specific angle into consideration. So this problem doesn't really ask us necessarily for the principal stresses and the shear stresses, but it still asks us to do a transformation of the stresses. So, if you recall, this is the same example that we worked in the previous class when we did stress transformation equations. So we should already know the right answers, right? I, I think so. Um, I want to use more circle now to solve for the normal stress perpendicular to the well and the shear stress along the length of the well. So in this, this is our bar, it has compression, it has an area, everything, and we're interested at the well. Now, the first step is to figure out the initial conditions. So in our initial condition, if I kind of rotate this plate upward, I have a block that has stress pushing on it in the x direction. And we said that that magnitude of stress in the x direction is equal to 800,000 newtons divided by this area, and if you go back to the previous example, that was 320 megapascals in compression. And that's it. There was no stress in the y direction, no shear stresses applied to this member. All we have is this initial stress. So this is going to be our starting block in which we're going to sketch more circle. And then we're going to rotate to some new orientation that's 70 degrees. So from this initial block, we want to tilt it 70 degrees. So if I draw in my original x and y axis, this x prime, y prime axis is what we're interested in. And we're interested in a rotation here of 70 degrees. One thing that's interesting to note, this is theta. I'll just make a little note here that real theta is 2 theta on more circle. So, we're going to need to draw more circle for this condition, and then we're going to do a rotation on that circle. That rotation that we're going to have to do is going to have to be two theta, because all of those stress transformation equations have that two theta tucked into it. So, we just need to remember that we're going to rotate 140 degrees on the circle. You'll see that one as we go and solve through this problem, and so I'll leave you here. Keep on watching. Let's plot more circle for the original element. Now, we do it for the original element because we have a convenient coordinate system. It's easy to see that the compression, sigma x, is minus 320 megapascals, and that sigma y and tau xy are both equal to zero. Step two in plotting more circle was setting up our coordinate axis. So we have sigma to the right and tau positive downward. And I've gone ahead and added a couple values to uh, my coordinate system to give me some sort of scale. So I think every four blocks here is 100 megapascals. So I plot my first point. This is step three in drawing more circle. I plot sigma x, tau xy and then sigma y minus tau xy. And so sigma x tau xy is negative 320 comma 0, and then sigma y minus tau xy is just 0 comma 0. So I can see that this is just a straight line, and I can easily identify the center. The center is halfway between them, so we can do the math, uh, but we should get that the center is at minus 160 comma 0. I can then draw my circle, and uh, using this program on uh, my tablet, it's much easier to draw the circle cleanly, and so you get a nice 
nice looking circle instead of maybe the wonky uh, egg that I had on the board or uh, in the previous video. Uh, so some benefits to technology, right? I have the center identified, so step five is to use trigonometry to solve for the radius of the circle. In this case, the radius is pretty easy to find uh, because it, we're just working along the x-axis. The radius is 160 megapascals. I'll go ahead and make a note of that on the bottom because remember the radius is equal to the maximum shear stress. So I can now determine that the max shear stress on this element is 160 megapascals. If we are also interested in the principal stresses, the principal stresses is where the circle intersects the x-axis. So we have one principal stress at zero and the other principal stress at negative 320 megapascals. This example problem is asking us for the normal stress perpendicular to the weld and the shear stress along the length of the weld. Now we already noted that this is at an angle of 70 degrees. However, like we discussed in the previous lesson, the normal stress perpendicular to the weld is sigma y prime. And so I want to focus here on the angle from the y-axis to the y prime axis. That angle is also a counterclockwise motion of 70 degrees. So when I come to Moore's circle, I want to find where sigma y is. And so I, that is my point at 0, 0. And then I want to rotate on the circle counterclockwise a distance of 2 theta, or 140 degrees. So remember, when we use the stress transformation equations, there's a 2 theta tucked away in all of the calculations. And so when we go from real life rotations to more circle rotations, we have to have this 2 theta multiplier. The point that we end up at is going to be sigma y prime comma minus tau x prime y prime. So think of uh, this is almost good working backwards through more circle. We in this case had some principal stresses and we're now working to some other orientation. So simply put, I just want to solve for the coordinates of this point. So I have the radius, the radius is 160 megapascals, and I have the angle, it was 140 degrees from the um, 0 comma 0, which then means that it is 40 degrees above the x-axis. So if I look at that little triangle, I see that the value minus tau x prime y prime is equal to the radius sine 40 degrees. And so that's going to be 160 sine 40 degrees. And so that gives us a value of 102.85 megapascals. Now I just want to point that this is going to be negative because the coordinate is on above the x-axis here and remember we took tau to be positive downwards. So the coordinates of this point, this minus tau x prime y prime, minus tau x prime y prime is equal to negative 102.85. So then the two negatives you can divide the negative out, and we see that tau x prime y prime equals 102.85 megapascals. This, in fact, matches the value that we obtained when we did example 2 in lesson 10. Next, I want to solve for sigma y prime. Sigma y prime is going to be the distance to the center minus an additional uh, r cosine 40. So I hope you see that the center is basically minus, at minus 160 comma 0. So minus 160 minus 160 cosine 40 gives me the final coordinate point of sigma y prime, and that is negative 282.57 megapascals. All right, so we've now done the transformation to this point. 
A couple final notes. Uh, I just wanted to again point out that this is the coordinates of the point of interest. And as we have in our rules, we always plot sigma y prime minus tau x prime y prime. So the coordinates of this point on the circle is minus 282.57 comma minus 102.85. And then we can then identify sigma y prime and tau x prime y prime. The other thing to know is which point I started from. So I started from 0 comma 0 because I was starting from the value of sigma y and then I was rotating to get to sigma y prime. So that's why I started at 0 comma 0. If we were interested in sigma x prime, I would have started at minus 320 comma 0 and then rotated from that point counterclockwise by 140 degrees. I hope you found this transformation using Mohr's circle instructive. So we can see that Mohr's circle is a little bit easier to create and remember, and it helps us uh, not need to remember those long stress transformation equations. Now, of course, if we have the stress transformation equations handy, uh, they can also be used, so uh, you can be flexible in which method you prefer. Uh, but I think more circle uh, has some power and it's a process. Uh, once we know how that process works and how to plot the circle, then we're able to do so much with it. I also want to point out that what more circle kind of represents. More circle represents like all the possible combinations of sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and tau x prime, y prime that this element can have. So imagine you can rotate any angle, so whether it's 70 degrees or 20 degrees or 35 degrees, all of those points that you would find fall along Moore's circle. So again, I think Moore's circle represents all the possibilities of stress at a particular point. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson on Moore's circle. I hope you have a newfound love for stress transformation more circle and of course for mechanics and materials. So I know it's a lot of information to process and right now I know that you're probably thinking stop teaching stop teaching I don't want to think anymore.